continuing with Unit 4, Lesson 11, uh, we're moving on to Problem 11.2. Uh, this one is going to be, uh, this is going to be tough to do via video. Uh, this is a very complex problem, uh, so I would encourage you, uh, as you take notes, jot down any, uh, jot down any questions that you have. Uh, so that when we uh, get together on Zoom or whatever, uh, we can we can have some pointed questions and good discussion. Uh, so here we go. What we want to do is uh, here's one part of a regular n-sided polygon. So it's n-sided, which means I don't really know how many sides that it's going to have. Uh, it's inscribed in a circle that has a radius of 1. What we want to do is we want to come up with a general formula for the perimeter of the polygon in terms of n. So remembering that uh, perimeter is just adding up all the sides. Uh, I know the perimeter, uh, if I find one side, I can just add them all up. Uh, so here we go. What we need to do is we need to figure out uh, how big is this side? Uh, so I'm going to take this triangle and I'm going to redraw it down here uh, so that we can deconstruct it a little bit. Uh, each one of these legs is one unit long uh, and my side length uh, is down here on the bottom. That's the entire side length. Okay, so we'll call that S. What we want to do is we want to figure out how big is S because the perimeter is going to be the number of sides times S. Okay, so it's going to be N times S. Okay, so uh, what we need to do uh, first is we need to realize that this is an isosceles triangle, remembering that however many sides of this polygon I have, this vertex angle for the isosceles triangle is going to be 360 divided by the total number of sides I have. Okay, so once I realize that, uh, remember that I can now drop an altitude down here. And now we're going to take this next triangle that we created. Here it is. And uh, I know that my hypotenuse is still 1. That's this side. Uh, my altitude here, I'm not really sure what that is. It doesn't really matter. Um, what I need to do is I need to figure out uh, how big is that side uh, knowing what this angle is. Now, I took this vertex angle and I broke it now. I cut it into half. So I got to take this 360 over n and I got to divide that by 2 or multiply it by 1 half. That's going to be the size of this angle. So 360 over n times 1 half is 360 over 2n, which is the same as 180 over n. That's going to be this angle measure, 180 over n. Now I know that this x side is opposite my angle. So I know if I take the sine of that 180 over n, okay, that's going to be equal to the opposite, which is x all over 1. So th this small leg of my right triangle, multiply both sides by 1, if you really need to see it, this small side x is equal to the sine of 180 divided by n. But that's not the side that I wanted. Remember, I want this original s. So this original s is two of these. Okay, so my s now my S now is going to be, well, I know the perimeter is the number of sides. My S is two of these things. So it's two times sine of 180 
over n. n times this whole thing, the perimeter, if I rewrite this, is 2 times n times sine of 180 over n. And remember, I'm just using the commutative property of multiplication here, which says I can multiply n times 2 times sine of 180 over n. Uh, it doesn't matter which one I write first, right? Commutative property of multiplication says I can write those in any order. So there is a good general formula for the perimeter of any polygon that is uh, inscribed inside a circle with a radius of 1.